Welcome to Whiskey and RPGs. My name is Solomon SK, and thank you for tuning in for another episode of MMO and RPG News Roundup. Just wanted to let you know I did set up my own Discord. The links will be down in the description below. But we got a lot of news to cover, so if you got your glasses or, in this case, cups ready, let's cover the news together. Cheers to you guys. So one of the bigger news that occurred um, is probably regarding New World, and this update is brought to you by MMORPG.com. New World delayed to August 25th, closed beta in July. It goes on to read, in a new update, we learned that New World has been delayed to August 25th with the closed beta starting in July. Unsurprisingly, the current global situation with... Uh, a particular sickness that I can't mention on YouTube, uh, and the remote working challenges have contributed to this uh, delay. And in quotes, they said, we want to make sure that we have the time needed to make New World the very best it can be for our players. As a result, we've chosen to delay the game's release in order to reach our quality bar as we work remotely for the foreseeable, foreseeable future. Uh, again, it goes on to read the post sites that the health and safety of their team is priority. Additionally, the post states that the alpha will remain open during this time. And again, in quotes, between now and our launch on August 25th, we will continue to share details on features and content going into the game. Please enjoy this new article on Invasion and keep your eye on our social media channels for more updates. So heading on over to their main webpage, they do actually do have an article called Fight of the World Invasions. I just wanted to let you know that this article um, is here for you to read, to consume and learn. I'm not going to go over it now because I do plan on making a dedicated video just solely on this article. And just to kind of update you guys on some of the features and uh, new information that's rolling out from them as well. Now, Massively OP also covered the story as well, and they said pretty much the same thing as the article in MMORPG.com, but I love that somebody posted this uh, meme here <laughs> of the dog with his head getting hit by a frisbee. Uh, no way, I'm not ready. And uh, I just I just had a really good chuckle when I saw that. So, <laughs> so I just realized that uh, the way I have uh, things set up right now in terms of my screen, um, there's an ad for a, a game called Edmunds Online, and um, right now they just have a certain part of the female anatomy just kind of like right, <laughs> right there in the middle. Uh, I do apologize for that, but uh, moving on. Uh, sticking with MMORPG.com, Core Punk's business model will be a buy-to-play plus cosmetic. Uh, it goes on to read, according to the team... The business model is the most popular request that they receive. The team announced that they are going to be going with a buy to play plus cosmetics model with battle passes in game shop as part of the cosmetics. They are cited as saying from day one, having a fair game was our top priority. On the other hand of maintaining game servers and supporting players takes a lot of effort and isn't cheap. So we were looking for a fair option that will make it work. The team notes that they will not sell any boosters or anything that will affect gameplay. Cosmetic items will only be bought in the game in-game shop or through the battle pass. Again, in quotes, having monthly subscription probably would have been the most fair type of business model for an MMO. Perhaps we would have not have to bother about in-game shop at all, but not many MMOs can survive on subscription these days, so we decided to go for buy-to-play model. And I certainly agree with that statement. There really isn't that many pay to play games anymore with a few exceptions for example like world of warcraft obviously uh, but even then they have their own cash shop items in the game uh, which is a little weird admittedly uh, but you also have the likes of final fantasy 14 and a few others that i can't really remember off the top of my head so um i think it's a smart move on their part but sticking with core punk uh, and this is brought to you by massivelyop.com uh, they go on to read, gender locking was a temporary solution while the developers worked on the rest of the game, claiming that removing gender locks would have represent a significant amount of work. After player feedback, however, the devs have somehow magically found a way to lift the removal of gender locks from their pipeline. Gosh, it's, it's, do it's doing it again, like right, right there in the middle with the new game. <laughs> it's, oh my goodness. Anyways, um, so yeah, there you have it. 
So admittedly, when I first read this, I was pretty excited about it, uh, but then I kind of started to backtrack a little bit. I was going to make this the thumbnail for the video, but I decided not to, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But yeah, this next news comes from MassivelyOP.com. Elder Tales is a developing MMORPG based on the anime Log Horizon. It goes on to read, by all accounts, it has a fair number of features going for it that should perk up, uh, or perk up one's ear in spite of the anime labeling on its tin. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't see that as a problem. I think anime MMORPGs are awesome. So it goes on to read, the game features four races in 12 different classes broken down into four archetypes, warrior, healer, vagabond, AKA thieves and mages. Uh, it also has very sandbox-like qualities, uh, for example, the ability to buy houses, fortresses, farms, and mines, as well as run your own shop, a dynamic events, a player-run economy, and a promise of non-linear storyline with multiple endings in a world that lets players, quote, explore without restrictions on the level and tasks, end quote. According to one of the game's Facebook posts, Elder Tales is currently doing some form of alpha testing, though there doesn't seem to be much information or confirmation, excuse me, on whether this is all being done without proper license or team. And that's the part where a red flag came up, like without a proper license or team. I mean, are you serious? So looking down in the comment section again, take all this with a grain of salt. I did do a bit of research to see if they uh, or the claims that you see here are backed up and for the most part it does seem to be the case but uh, but still take a grain of salt if you will but uh, the first post was written by a random MMO fan. This person writes the developers who are doing this have no official license to do this. They conveniently do not mention this fact on their site or their discord or their VK or telegram but this is the truth. Anyone could check by contacting contacting the original writer for the novel. Uh, they are not planning or ever releasing it through digital distribution uh, platforms like Steam or Epic Store, obviously, because they don't have a license to do so. Uh, so that's a huge red flag. And a lot of people are saying, you know, enjoy your lawsuit, which is, is a fair statement, in my opinion. And as you can see, another user wrote, so a team has come up out of the blue with no trackable prior experience and literally no existence outside of a couple of modding and indie game sites. Uh, this is either a scam or implausible pipe dream with another user saying, yes, it appears to be a passion project for one individual. So as you can see, the comments go on and on and on and they pretty much mirror what I've just um, summed up. And as I stated before numerous times, I'm a huge fan of anime and anime RPGs, JRPGs. Um, and so, would I be checking this game out? Uh, highly unlikely, but I thought I'd cover it anyways just to let you know what's going on out there. So for those of you who have a PlayStation 4, I hope you guys are enjoying your copy of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, it did come out last night here in the US, and from what I gather, looks like a pretty amazing game. I've been seeing the uh, Twitch streams as well as the reviews on YouTube. Um, but for those of us who don't have a PS4 and only have a PC, uh, looks like there might be some hope after all. And this comes to you by PCGamer.com. Final Fantasy VII Remake trailer hints at a PC version. It does go on to read near the start of the trailer. There's a caption at the bottom that says gameplay captured on PC, suggesting rather offhandedly that a PC version of VII Remake exists. Whether that PC version is simply a development build or a version intended to be released for the platform is obviously unclear, but it does seem more likely now that Square Enix plans to bring the remade adventures of Cloud and Co. to PC, likely sometime after its PlayStation exclusivity comes to an end. If this news is true, I definitely welcome it. Um, it's more than likely than not true. Uh, in my opinion, uh, but by then hopefully we'll get the next installment of Final Fantasy VII Remake because uh, if you didn't know already, I believe that Square Enix said that they will be releasing VII uh, Remake in three different parts. Um, I'm guessing because it's just such a huge project, uh, but there you have it. This next bit of news comes from Allchar.com. Cyberpunk 2077 will have at least two expansions, a ton of DLC, and I do apologize, it is cut out uh, on the right there. 
It does go on to read, CD Projekt Red held a teleconference regarding the earnings in 2019 with the investors where a lot of interesting info was revealed besides the Witcher 3 sales over the years and CP2077 numbers. They also revealed a portion of the expansion and DLC plan for the latter. According to Adam, uh, I'm not going to even try to pronounce that, I apologize. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 will have, quote, no less DLC than The Witcher 3 had, end quote. Considering that expansions are mostly counted as DLC these days, we could be looking at at least two expansions with fully fledged storylines, just like with Hearts of Stone and Blood and Wine. Additionally, The Witcher 3 had plethora of DLC drops that weren't expansions during its lifetime. The best part is that these weren't paid and included gear, cosmetics, and even new quests. With that in mind, it seems like we will be getting something along those lines in CP 2077 as well. So as I covered last time, uh, World of Warcraft has started their alpha testing for their next expansion Shadowlands and I saw Asmogold start streaming it again on Twitch. <laughs> if you guys don't know who Asmogold is, he's one of the bigger uh, World of Warcraft Twitch streamers. And he's been kind of absent from the platform uh, from for at least maybe uh, two months, I'd, I'd want to say, maybe three. And he started streaming again because I guess he actually got into the alpha. Of course he would. He's one of the bigger um, well-known WoW players. But it seems like we're actually getting um, some information about what it's going to be like, and this is brought to you by MassivelyOP.com. World of Warcraft walks through the enhanced starting experiences for Shadowlands. Uh, real quick, goes on to say, from now on, levels 1 through 10 will take place not in individual racial starting zones, but a new shared zone in which players take part of an expedition for their respective factions, searching out an earlier missing expedition. And if you're still curious, uh, this next news comes from MMORPG.com. BlizzCon not cancelled uh, yet in parentheses. Uh, World of Warcraft Shadowlands prequel book receives cover. The novel is called Shadows Rising, the cover which was revealed by Blizzard Entertainment and Penguin Random House today. As well as the fact that in BlizzCon news, Blizzard didn't outright cancel the event, but maintained that they don't know yet for certain whether or not the event will go forward. I think they're just, I think they're being cautiously, cautiously optimistic about it, which I kind of understand, but I really hope that all this you know, the sickness that everybody's been getting worldwide just blows over as soon as possible. And I know many of you guys feel the same way too. And just really quick, uh, I know I've been covering this extensively for the past week, uh, but from MMORPG.com, Chronicles of Valyria Kickstarter update aims to clarify game status. And as you know, last time everybody thought this game was dead, but apparently not. Soulbound Studios CEO Jeremy Walsh penned a letter on M the MMORPG's official Kickstarter in an attempt to clarify the game's status moving forward. And really quick, if you didn't know, there were a number of backers of the game who were saying that they were going to contact the Washington State Attorney to in uh, launch a full investigation. But it does go on to say, as him being quoted, saying, It was never my intention to permanently end the development of the game, disregard your contributions, or fail to deliver what we promised. As such, Walsh mentions he is working with a team of advisors to investigate what their options are, and he states he will be posting a detailed facts for those with questions surrounding the situation. In my personal opinion, I feel like the damage has already been done. I'm not exactly sure if this game could redeem itself at the end of the day. Of course, you have those super fans who are looking forward to this game uh, much, uh, much, much more than your average backer out there. But who's to say? Do I still want this game to be released? Of course I do. But, oh man, it, it, it definitely has its work cut out for it. That's for sure. And moving to our PSAs. This is from MassivelyOP.com. Planetside 2 hypes up the upcoming Outfit Wars competitive final with a double XP weekend on PC. The culmination of the Outfit Wars competition in Planetside 2 is coming this Saturday, April 11th, with the final event being played out on Twitch. And the folks at Rogue Planet are celebrating the event with a little something for PC players, a weekend of double XP. 
This next one is by Altar.com. The Crew 2 gets a free weekend. Now, I know this isn't really an RPG per se, but it does have an interesting open world uh, dynamic or mechanic or whatever you want to call it. And so that's why I wanted to cover it here real quick. Ubisoft are still trying to revitalize The Crew 2's player base and are launching another free weekend in hopes of attracting more players. It goes on to read, The Crew 2 will be free to play for everyone from 9 to or the 9th to the 13th of April in 2020. Xbox One users are not invited for some reason. I, I don't know why. <laughs> but PC and PlayStation 4 players can go to the free weekend website and choose their platform. Those who do give it a shot will have access to the full game, including the new Inner Drive update that brought about 20 new vehicles as well as a PvE competitions and summit events. I don't know, maybe the Xbox One version has the most population. They felt like they don't need any more. <laughs> but anyways, heading on over to MMORPG.com. Dauntless releases 1.2.1. Hits today bring Springtide and quality of life. It goes on to read, the Springtide event will see you hunting for eggs from the island, herding puff hops into their correct pens, and fending off attacks from St St Station. Stai Shan? Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, additionally, you can earn uh, 50 carat chi or chips. I think they meant to put chips, not ships. Uh, you can then use these yeah, chips in the springtime shop and acquire unique items. Heading on back over to Gematsu.com, cyberpunk-themed roguelike Danger Scavenger launches in second quarter of 2020 for PC, fourth quarter 2020 for PC. PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Switch. Oh, that was a mouthful. <laughs> but in any event, uh, Danger Scavenger is a cyberpunk-themed, fast-paced action roguelike, which will launch for PC via Steam in the second quarter of 2020, followed by PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and the Switch in the fourth quarter of 2020. Developers Star Drifters and Pio are, yeah, announced. <laughs> PR to walk or I don't know if it's a French company or not. Um, but yeah, really quick, if you're into top down sort of isometric, isometric uh, gameplay with sort of tune shading, little cartoony graphics, this is uh, something that might interest you. Heading on back over to MassiveOP.com, Black Desert brings a water festival and Golden Goose event to PC, barbecue missions to mobile. So lots of things going on for Black Desert right now. But it does go on to read, Black Desert and Black Desert Mobile are once more just full of events for players to take part in, including a water festival, Golden Goose, and Refer a Friend promotion for the PC version and a barbecue mission for the mobile. For the mobile version, players can complete three barbecue missions uh, every day to earn barbecue ing ingredients. Uh, once players get all three ingredients, they can turn them in for a barbecue chest item that's full of various rewards. As for the PC version of Black Desert, there's a mystical Ellie's Water Festival, which gives a wide swath of consumables, materials, and other rewards, and a Golden Goose event that lets players complete a quest, which rewards a choice of several different types of eggs that contain boost rewards crystal shards or xp boost based on the egg selected and lastly there is a two week long refer a friend promotion going on right now uh if you do decide to download the game and give it a try consider using my referral id so then that way we both get uh rewards and whatnot in the game so this next bit of news comes from MMOculture.com. Skyforge, popular sci-fi MMORPG, celebrates fifth year with tons of new content. It goes on to read, global publisher My.Games is proud to release the fifth anniversary expansion. Players are treated with a massive content update, introducing festive events as well as new content and features, a new divine form, new progression system, and celebratory anniversary costumes await for players as well. And just really quick, um, does go on to say that there are new divine forms called the Walken. I believe that's how you say it. I do apologize if it isn't. New Evasion Atlas, uh, which is a star map that offers a chance to maximize damage, increase class efficiency, or grant other beneficial effects. New legendary weapons, and a plethora of other things as well. Moving on to MMORPG.com, Sandbox MMORPG Fractured, open to all backers April 10th goes on to read Fractured, the Spartial OS-based sandbox MMORPG is open to all backers on 
April 10th. So I'm assuming from that sentence, uh, even if you are a backer, there was a certain tier that you needed to have bought in order to gain access, or at least that's my assumption. They said that, quote, we haven't had the chance to stress test yet. And with the sort of uh, world um, sickness <laughs> going around, they thought that the event would be the logical thing to do. The event starts on Friday, April 10th at 10 a.m. Eastern Time and will run through Sunday, April 19th. Note that after this time, access will be dialed back down to Legend Pack backers or higher. Oh, so then, okay, it, it does con, uh, confirm my um, assertion. Additionally, April 12th is set to include a Q&A live stream with CEO Chico, Chico, Chicopo Geller, or yeah, guys, you already know I'm horrible with names. I do apologize, but yeah, there's a Q&A on their Twitch channel. Heading on over to MassiveOP.com, check out Population Zero's new combat video and pick up a key for this weekend's beta. It goes on to read, Population Zero is dropping two fun things today for watchers of the MMO Survival Sandbox. A dev blog all about combat, including a new video, and a key to get into the upcoming weekend beta. Mplex Games will be running a beta starting tomorrow, April 11th at 5 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time through April 13th at the same time. To that end, the studio has granted massively OP keys so our readers can come check it out. And as of recording, there is 1,233 keys left. But lastly, do note that Mplex says the game is still under NDA, so you won't be able to stream or upload video of your adventures. Arc Age Unchained will be available for free for a limited time starting on April 9th, and this is brought to you by MMORPG.com. It does go on to read that the event is set to last from April 9th to April 13th. The event will be available on both Steam and non-Steam clients at the time according to the press release. Heading on back over to Gematsu.com, I thought I'd cover this really quick just because, again, it's very interesting. And you know that I love con covering interesting things. Divine Gilmore for PlayStation 4 pre-registration now available in Japan. Goes on to read, pre-registration pre for the PlayStation 4 version of unit summoning style fantasy RPG Divine Gilmore is now available via the PlayStation Store in Japan. Developed by a Chinese studio, Shenzhen Fire Element Network Technology. Oh, that's a long name. Uh, Divine Gilmore first launched for PC browser in Japan in September 2012 as a free-to-play title with in-game purchases. See, I didn't even like. They're still developing browser-based games, and this is a browser-based RPG. I suppose I shouldn't be that surprised, considering uh, things like Maple Story was a huge thing back then. I mean, it still is now, but there you have it. And that does it for today's MMO and RPG News Roundup. I do appreciate it if you made it with me so far. Again, I've made a Discord channel, so if you are curious and would like to talk and just, you know, submit your own sort of news and whatever whiskey recommendations, I'm open to that as well. The links will be down in the description below. And again, hope you guys are staying safe out there and continue to wash your hands and do all the safe stuff that they tell you to do. Hope you guys have a blessed night and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.